Let's go quickly through all the available particle types and enters. There is a lizard hue. The lizard hue is helpful in creating a path element, for example. By changing the frequency for the axis, you can modify the figure or path scene. Next, we have the grid. You can change the density of the grid by changing the x and y values. Make use of the jitter values to distribute the points uneven. The source is one of the most used emitters. Other particle systems also call this a point emitter. It is one of the most flexible emitters because it has position, birth, lifetime, speed and variations and randomness of all the values. Then we have the mesh vertex emitter. This emitter makes use of the vertices provided by a mesh or geometry. It will emit from each vertex position a particle. Depending on the mesh you would need to increase the particle count to have a particle emitted from each vertex available. You can use also the standard geometry primitives from Ventus. Another very cool and also unique emitter is the data emitter. With this emitter type you can visualize data. Use an Excel file, XML file or any other kind of dynamic data. Let the particles move or scale accordingly or change their colors to external data. Use the path emitter and draw particles along a path created in an external software. You can also use a line renderer instead of a simple sprite renderer. The secondary emitter uses already existing particle positions and emits from their positions a secondary stream. In this case I use this 2D spline and emit from the spline particle positions a secondary stream. As you see I change the speed for each axis and the particles travel quicker along the modified axis.